Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning, and welcome to all of those joining us online. We have a few announcements this morning. We are collecting coats for kids, and Rosella, how many have been taken in? 16 have been taken in to Dove already, and there are some more out front. Uh, we're collecting items for Dove, and they need anything. If you donated last year, just get the same thing again. And we've got several things out front, but they need it. They need more of that, and they need more of the, uh, they need everything. So if you have anything you would like to supply for Dove, uh, get in touch with me, and I'll make sure you can get in the church to leave it here. In Iliopolis, the board will meet virtually on Monday the 30th to discuss in-person worship moving forward, and I will send the link out to that beforehand. In Niantic, there, our board meeting is to be announced, and we will get that information to everyone as we can. Are there any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship. And let's sing together. pray together. Tender, comforting shepherd, your steadfast love is present in this place and resides within each of us. But sometimes it is hard, so very hard, to open ourselves to your love. We feel like scattered sheep, frightened and alone. Help us to know your loving presence as we live our uh, community. Enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which we have been called. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians, chapter 1, the verses 15 through 23. And when Paul writes letters to his churches, he always begins with prayer and thanksgiving. And he, in the first 14 verses of this, has described their faithful ministry that he has heard reports of and we jump in at this point he says for this reason ever since i heard about your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all god's people i have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come and god placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills everything in every way paul always starts his correspondence with gratitude. What a nice thing that is. Isn't it lovely when you run into somebody that you haven't seen recently and they greet you with how thankful they are for you in their lives? I mean, what a wonderful way to encounter friends. What a wonderful practice to adopt for ourselves. 
when we see those folks that we care about or folks that we meet. Just, I am so thankful to have run into you today. You mean so much to me. Here's why. That would make you feel pretty good throughout the day, wouldn't it? Giving thanks or showing gratitude is a gift, and it's a mindset. And the world right now is hard. In some parts of the world, it's been hard for people for a long time, and now it's hard for us, too. And we have this common difficulty that we share with all people throughout the world with the pandemic, and it's doing a number on us. It is so hard. People are getting sick. Hospitals are running short of resources. And our tolerance for patience and waiting is running thin. And we are bumped right up against the holidays. And it just magnifies all of this. Mindset is everything. Folks, right now, people in this world are hungry to hear a word of hope, to hear a word of peace. I met with a group last night, and I asked, what is one thing that you would want in this world? And every person said, peace. I just want to feel peace. And how true is that? If we could feel inside of ourselves, peace. What a gift that would be. And the thing is, we have that to give. We may say, what? I want it for myself. I don't have it. But we do have it. It is available to us all around us all the time. And we have an abundance of it to share. We who follow Jesus Christ know that God has the last word in all things. And nothing will prevent life. Nothing will prevent God. Nothing gets the final word over God. God gets the last word always, all days, in all things, and that word is life. Have you ever been hiking and you come up on a rocky outcrop and there's something growing through the rocks? That always seems like a miracle to me. That, that cement, that cement that holds us up, that holds up buildings and skyscrapers, that cement cannot hold back life. It perseveres. Life breaks through. And folks, we will too. This is a season. This is a season. And we're beginning to see rumors of light at the end of the tunnel. The vaccines are getting closer. We can see that there is going to be a season after this. And we are going to get there. And we can do this in the meantime. But we have to share what we know. I have had so many people reach out to me through text, through phone calls, in person, and what have you, saying, I need the meat of the gospel. I need something solid. I need God to be real and tangible and present during this time. And we're coming up on a season of incarnation, the season where we talk about how God put skin on and came to live on this earth. And think about that word incarnate for a minute. It's got the word carne in it. Now, I know a lot of us like to eat Mexican food. We know what the word carne is, right? What is carne? It's the meat. God is incarne, incarnate within us. God is in our very muscles and bones and sinews and fibers. And folks, it's time that we slowed down enough and took a breath and connected with that truth. Here's an exercise that I invite you to do to build a faithful habit moving into this next year. I want you to take three minutes, three minutes every day. I want you to think of a gross place 
like a trash dump or a sewer plant or whatever, some gross place. And I want you to go there in your mind. And I want you to see how God is present even there. Do that every day, three minutes. That's basically a commercial break during a TV show. Not that we do those anymore, but three minutes. Develop that muscle, because when you can do that, when you can see God even in the worst of places, then you develop that muscle. You develop those eyes to see and those ears to hear and that heart to feel, and you know that God is present. And then when your life slams right up against it, you already have those muscles, and you can see God speaking to you from the depths in anything that you are going through. So let's work on developing that muscle for the new year. Awareness of God's presence. And let's focus on gratitude. You know, if you talk to a dietician, they'll tell you, you are what you eat. I'm going to tell you, you are what you think. Whatever you focus your mind and your spirit on is going to be your reality. And I can say this because from my biology background and from research, and yeah, I still read science journals, but whatever. They're entertaining to me. Um, Neuroscience is learning more and more about the cells in our brain. And I've talked about this before, the glial cells, those cells that hold our brains together, our neocortex, that miraculously human part of brains that's capable of cognitive thought and reason. The glial cells every night are like Roombas. They go around our brains and they kick out all the garbage, clean it all up and dump it out. And they know what's garbage and they know what is to keep because of the connections, the neural connections that are made. Neural connections are made by thinking on it. You know, if you want to memorize something, you keep saying it over and over. You make those neural connections in your brain and it'll stick. Well, at the end of the day, our brain clears out all the stuff that's garbage, the stuff that we haven't focused on, and it cements all of that stuff that we have. So what are you focused on right now? Are you focused on grief and despair? Are you focused on hope and Jesus? Are you focused on gratitude Get your minds on Jesus. Take a breath. Focus on God. Focus on Jesus. And practice three minutes every day of experiencing God's nearness. Because our realities are what we think. I invited folks to submit a video of what they are thankful for. And I compiled those together. It's folks from the Nyanic Church and some folks from the Iliopolis Church. So let's take some time, and I hope you enjoy this, and let us move into this season with gratitude. Amen. I am thankful for my family and my friends and for their health and happiness. I am thankful for long walks in the woods. I'm thankful for a home and for safety. And I am thankful for my faith. Hi, 
everybody in Eliopolis. I am thankful for our health, thankful for our safe trip down here in this nice warm weather. We are, have so many friends, we love it down here. We are thankful for it. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm thankful for my good health. It seems to be holding out, and that's a good thing. Have a great holiday. Good evening, everyone. Melissa's has asked us to speak on some things that we've been thankful for this year since we won't be able to have Thanksgiving church this Sunday. So a few things that I'm especially thankful for this year, is, of course, is of my family and, and my grandkids and especially my new granddaughter and uh, our church family. Uh, even though we don't get to get together very often, our church family is very important to us. And uh, I want to also thank the, the, the God for letting us have a good farming season. Jeff, Kim, and I, we had a, had a good season. We were safe, didn't get hurt, and uh, everything worked out well. And also, I want to th hope that everybody stays in good health, do your social distancing, and wear your mask. I also am thankful for family. It's very important to us, not just our family, but the church family also. But I'm also thankful for living in the country and having a country road. Um, it's a great place to walk and to talk to God. It's a great place to see beautiful sunrises and sunsets. So I'm very thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the opportunity um, to be able to uh, take advantage of that. I also wanna say people, I'm thankful that this is almost over. COVID is almost over. We need to hang in there till the end. Uh, we've been through the lockdowns before and we know we can make it. Uh, we're coming to the end of COVID. As soon as the vaccine comes out, we can see the end that is in sight. So stay safe, wear your mask, and keep your distance. Bye. Hi, everybody. Just uh, going over what we're thankful for this Thanksgiving season. Um, for sure, thankful for my family's health, health overall. Um, we've been lucky through this pandemic uh, and haven't seen a whole lot in our family just yet, and I'm just hopeful that it stays that way. I'm just hopeful and thankful to have a job uh, and just trying to stay healthy and follow the guidelines the best way we can. Um, and I'm happy when we all can meet again. That would be, I would be very grateful for that. And I'm just happy to keep my faith through all this as well. And, and with all the, the drama in this world right now, I'm just happy to know that God is always in control. Um, so look forward to seeing you all uh, hopefully soon and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all. We are thankful and grateful for our family, for our friends, for our church, good health so far. And we wish that for all. Thank you and have a happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my family, wife and kids, especially. And my job where I get to make cool, huge stuff like this. Big mining truck. Hello, everybody. I wanted to talk about what I'm thankful for. So I wrote it down. I am thankful for God's many, many blessings on me. Let's start with my birthday and my roles in so many different ways. I'm thankful as a daughter, as a granddaughter, as a niece, as a sister, as an aunt, and as a great aunt, as a friend, as a wife, as a daughter-in-law, as a mother, as a teacher, as a learner, as a confidant, as a mother-in-law, as a neighbor, as a grandmother, and as a disciple of Christ. I am thankful for Jesus who forgives me and 
this is predetermined by God because I am a child of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, Niani Christian Church family. I am representing the Mann family here perched on top of the bucket tractor, cutting down a large, large bush. I am thankful for tractors and especially for my family, for all the prayers and support that everyone gave during Kurt's dad's sickness and his passing. I am thankful that we have the faith in Jesus Christ to get us through everything, even this stupid COVID year. I am thankful for my children, for my husband, for my dogs, and especially just that we have freedom in this good old United States of America to practice our faith. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. have so much to be thankful for. Would anyone like to share how you've been blessed this week? Yeah, for health? Absolutely. One thing this year has revealed to us is the depth and breadth of things that we have in life and what is truly important. And I think this Thanksgiving might be just the most powerful one yet. Even if we can't gather with family, we can talk to them, we can visit with them on the phone and through technology, but we know what God has done for us and we can recall that. We have so many concerns, so many concerns. Folks, COVID has affected so many in our communities and in our school districts. And just go through your phone, through the contacts, and just scroll through the names in your phone and pray. Pray for God's health, God's peace, God's presence for all of the people in our lives. Are there specific prayers to be shared this morning? Darlene Johnson's family. Darlene Johnson passed away this week, so let's keep her family and friends in our prayers. Uh, Rita Laughlin has moved into assisted living, so let's keep Diana and her sister and all of the family in our prayers. Are there other concerns? Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, in this season, we know that you are God, that you can step into our world and transform us far more than we could ever ask or even imagine. So we pray that you might open our minds to new truths about ourselves. We pray that you would reveal yourself to us in new ways. Help us, O oh God, to develop the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the spirits to know that you are with us. O oh God, we pray for this whole world. God, there's so much brokenness and despair <clears throat> in this world. We pray that your wisdom would pour out upon all leaders and all nations, that all people would have what they need. We pray, O oh God, for those who live in the wake of disaster and violence and sickness and death. We pray for those among our family and friends who need healing in their bodies, minds, and spirits. Hear us now, O oh God, as we take time to pray. Loving God, in these days ahead, help us to not keep you to ourselves. Oh God, overflow in our hearts to the bursting point where we have to share you 
with all the people we know and encounter. God, help us to be like John the Baptist and point to Jesus and say, there is where God is. Speak to us, God, and speak through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The offertory sentence comes from Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. And as we come with our offerings today, we come around this table and we give thanks to God for breath, for life, and for all things. Let us come around this table together. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able. May the God of all joy and peace and love surround and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. 